Today we're at Brocade's corporate headquarters. Joining me is AJ Casamento. He is a solution engineer with Brocade. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, George. So AJ, let's talk about the modernization of storage architectures. You know, there's a lot of new things happening right now in storage. We've got the whole uh, converge, hyper-converge phenomenon going on. We've got all these new apps that I think are inundating people. But you know, you and I have been around this industry probably longer than we care to admit, and there's some basic fundamentals that still remain true today, right? Absolutely true. I think that uh, people need to remember that we got into a lot of the shared storage networking for a set of uh, requirements that, in that included things like um, reliability, they included scale, right, and they included performance. And those things are still critical. In fact, I would make the, the argument, George, that they are even more critical today than they were when we got started in this. I, I totally agree with you, because and I think the, the real determining factor here is the user of the all of all these services, right? Their their expectations are so incredibly high. You know, as as we speak today, Twitter's been down. I think worldwide productivity just went up because we don't have to be on Twitter. Yeah. But you know, the, the expectation that nothing ever goes down now is immense, right? It is huge. The the concept of a service level agreement really has gone away, right? People have an expectation that everything is available all the time. I can reach to whatever I want. Right. And humans do not do well with disruption, whether it's you know an interruption in, in the game broadcast that they're watching or their ability to get to their online banking or anything else, right? If it's not available, it's a major panic. Right, and I think if we look at like the, the storage architectures, you know, we go way back to sort of the foundation of brocade, right? We had direct attached storage, and then we, you guys in particular, came with the idea: okay, let's let's share this. So we can leverage these capabilities, and and now to some extent, we're sort of seeing some people dabble with. Well, let's not do that anymore. Let's let's pull it back in. What are your thoughts on that? So I think one of the things you sort of have to keep in mind is one of the big pushes that that moved the sand market forward had to do with the virtualization wave, mm -hmm. right? And as you virtualize things, I would make the argument that, that workloads become more fluid. Lo uh, loca location or placement of applications becomes more fluid. Right. And so state inside a platform when you need to make a migration or you need to make a move or when a platform fails is not your friend. Right. You need the ability to be able to move on demand, right? Because the hypervisor team is responding to application owners who have a limited or no sense of humor uh, about any kind of issue or outage with their application. Well, just in general, they have no sense of humor. But yeah. um, so let's talk about hyperconverged architectures in particular, right? Yes. Because I think that that's something that is on the mind of, for certainly the IT professionals that are watching. What's the role of a, a fabric in that architecture, or does it even make sense to go hyperconverged? Well, so it does. It does make sense to go hyperconverged for certain kinds of workloads in certain kinds of situations. I have customers that are doing it very much so when they're light on IT resource. They don't have a heavy staff. They want something that's easy to set up. Um, I think that the folks that want to look at scale uh, over time, I think the, the folks that want to look at, at capacity over time, those are folks that will continue to drive the, the shared networking um, kind of topology because when you, when you have platforms like this, right, and then you need to add more compute, you simply add the compute platform. You don't have to replicate all the other components. When you need to add more storage, right, or, um, you know, you end up with, uh, the, the need to implement a new technology, Flash or NVMe over Fabric or something else, right? Um, what it comes down to is the ability to add that seamlessly to the network, right, without having to swap out platforms or to, to uh, rip and replace. Yeah, I, and I think that you, when you wrote up scale, the first thing I thought of was granularity. I, I want to be able to scale at a very granular level. And, and we don't see, the, the data center doesn't move in lockstep. It, you know, a great example is we went from hard drives, which were the slowest thing in the architecture, to Flash drives, which all of a sudden now it made everything else look slow. And in compute, you know, there's always a step level jump in compute power, right? And so you want to yeah. access those in a selective manner. And it's very rare that people get to refresh all the components at the same time, to your point, right? right. Or that those components will be in lockstep in terms of performance and scale, right? Because the technologies uh, grow independently. Yeah, I mean, the only situation I ever see that happening is a, you know, a, a greenfield type of data center type of situation, or ironically, a disaster where your data center gets completely wiped out and you're starting over any 
any, anyways, right? Yeah, I think the progression uh, model is the is the more common one, right? Where people begin to build in new elements of new technology into the environment. It's one of the reasons why, as an example, most major data centers are still less than 25% line rate 10 gig Ethernet in the right. network, uh, even though 10 gig Ethernet's been shipping for 14 years. Right, yeah, it's, it is. So the other thing I thought of when you wrote those three things up is everything is going this way, right? I want more performance, I want more scale, and I want more reliability. So what are some of the requirements that I need in a modern network to be able to hit these this next wave of expectation? So I think you need to reduce the latency in the environment. You need to be able to measure. And so analytics becomes critical because individual application owners are going to want to know what's going on with their application. They're not interested in the rest of the guys in the stack. They want to know specific to themselves. Um, I think that the scale of the platform needs to be able to scale on demand because service windows, I mean, George, you know this as, as well as anybody, service windows are almost impossible to negotiate these days. Right. Yeah, you just don't get them. We've talked about uh, NVMe in, the, in a, another video. Let's talk about analytics, because I know that that's uh, uh, important to you guys at Brocade. What are you guys doing from an analytics perspective? Well, there's a couple things that we tend to, to forget to mention to people, because 40% you know, of the population of the company is engineering, right? So right. we build a lot into the products, and sometimes we, we neglect to mention things like, we actually measure every frame on every port through the platform. Um, there's no other technology in the market in, in Ethernet, in InfiniBand, or in Fiber Channel that does that. Why does that matter? It matters because there is transactional value in the application, right? Uh, recovery point objective, George, is a conversation that people need to have again, right? Sure. Which is basically a conversation with an application owner that says, hey, how much data can your application lose and you're still okay? Right. And pretty frequently, they're gonna look at you and go, well, zero. zero right, right, yeah. And zero is a valid answer, but zero has an, an architecture that goes with it. Sure. And people need to remember that. The recovery time objective is the conversation you have about to the point you were just making about Twitter being offline today or the, D the DDoS attack that's going on in the market today. Um, what's the cost opportunity of the application being offline? So what does it cost a business when their interfaces are, are, are down, right? Right, yeah. And those two conversations are critical conversations people still need to have, and the storage networking infrastructure that you put underneath it is one of the basic foundation points to making that real. I think that's really a key from the modernization. You know, we're talking about IT modernization all the time. It's important that we continue to keep the infrastructure itself up to, up to pace with everything else that's going on. Absolutely true. Well, AJ, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. So there you have it. I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland. Thanks for joining us today.